Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 3rd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Today we got three vulnerabilities to start out with in the Cepado Home Automation Smart Up. They were discovered by Charles Dodeman and he just published a blog post with some details regarding these vulnerabilities. Three vulnerabilities in total and very typical IoT Internet of Things style vulnerabilities. The first one that sort of really sets off a chain of vulnerabilities here is a static SSH key. Once that SSH key is extracted from one of these devices, it can be used to authenticate to any device made by this manufacturer. Once an attacker has access to the device via SSH, they can also extract hashed passwords. Now, at first it doesn't really sound that bad that you can extract the hashed password. Yes, you can brute force it, but this is not actually the real problem here. The problem is that the hash itself can be used to authenticate to the API, and that's where the two other vulnerabilities come into play. First, the hash can be used to authenticate to the local API, but it also works against the remote API. Once an attacker has access to the API and is able to authenticate, they are able to take full control of all devices connected to the smart hub, including locks. Cipato released a patch for these issues back in March and Charles Donovan waited until now in order to give users a chance to patch before he did release the details about these vulnerabilities. And recently I have been looking into DNS over HTTPS and will have mentioned uh, this protocol a couple times here in the podcast. Our fellow handler, John Bambanek, now set up a little GitHub repository with host names and IP addresses being used by DNS over HTTPS services. This can be used in order to either block or at least detect the use of these services. The problem here is that these services can be used to bypass corporate security controls. So you definitely do want to keep an eye on it and make sure these services are not abused. Cloudflare today suffered a system-wide outage lasting about half an hour. And of course, given that Cloudflare is in front of uh, probably millions of different websites, this affected a wide range of companies and there were lots of rumors about a possible attack. Cloudflare did release a statement that this was not the result of an attack. Instead, it was just a result of a software software update gone bad. As a result of the software update, Cloudflare servers experienced CPU spikes that then caused them to fall over. At this point, everything should be back to normal. And Google today released the usual monthly security update for Android. The one level, as Google calls it, fixes a dozen different vulnerabilities, five of which are rated critical and can lead to remote code execution. Out of these five, three are in the media framework that has probably been sort of the most dangerous part in Android for quite a while now. The five level part of the update does address vulnerabilities that are specific to Qualcomm uh, this month. Five of these vulnerabilities are critical and a little bit more than half of the vulnerabilities that are being addressed are in Qualcomm's closed source components. As usual, depending on the phone and the carrier you're using, it may take a while for these updates for you to show up. And in Diaries, we got yet another great PowerShell script from Rob. Rob this time focuses sort of on the follow-up of his prior Diaries. The prior Diaries, he talked about how to identify processes and such across a domain. Now, in this latest installment, he basically describes one thing that you could do if you find a malicious process running on multiple systems in a larger Windows network. The PowerShell script 
script that he is presenting here allows you to kill processes across the network that match a certain hash. As he points out in the post, this is something you definitely have to be careful with. It's certainly not sort of a complete instant response, but something that may be worthwhile considering if you're sort of trying to stop the bleeding during an incident. Now, based on the prior diaries, we got a couple of responses that suggest other GUI tools and the like uh, to accomplish similar tasks. Well, the big advantage here of PowerShell is that it scales across many, many systems. So if you have thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of systems in your network, then a script like this can, of course, be a huge time saver. And well, that's it for today. And given that Thursday is the July 4th holiday and uh, most people have the Friday after that off as well, I'll take a break with these podcasts until next Monday. So thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.